Hello and welcome to video number three of the Adobe Illustrator series where I will be showing you how to work with the pen tool. It's my favorite tool to work with in Illustrator. It's located over on the left hand side. It is the third one down and yes there is a hidden panel and if we click and hold you can see that there are some other pluses and minuses and all kinds of stuff. I'll try to show you that in this video but for right now I just want the basic pen tool chosen and it's highlighted and you see that your cursor turns into a fountain pen looking kind of thing right here. It works very similar to line it just has a couple of extra additions to it. So if I click and click you see that I can draw straight lines which is pretty cool. I can make really crazy shapes if I want to and then if I go back to the very first one I clicked to start the line you'll notice that there's a little circle next to the cursor and what that indicates is that I'm about to close the shape which means it's its own shape, it's its own entity. This kind of looks like a jaded deer or something but um, as you can see, if I use the black arrow, I can now take this shape and move it around. And um, it's pretty much uh, a shape just like a rectangle or a circle. It's just a highly customized shape. I can give it color if I want to. Now sometimes this happens where all of a sudden your swatches are missing. If that ever happens, go to the library, go to default switches. And I'm pretty sure it's print that you can use. Yep, it sure is. And it's unfortunately, I can't explain why it does that, but this has always been my fix is to just kind of make this sort of happen separate from up here. Again, I don't know why it does that. So now I can choose if I want it to be purple. Oh, I got the outline actually highlighted. So whatever square is on top, that's what it's actually going to um, work with. So there's that. I can make it pink. I can make it orange. Let's stick with orange. That's a nice bright fun cheery color for my weird looking deer. And I'm just gonna kind of leave this and actually what I like to do is I like to put all my stuff over on this side so that I can just have the toolbar and my working space right there. Okay so I've got a purple lined orange deer looking thing which is great. I can still use the white arrow to kind of manipulate these grips if I want to. So if I want to have my deer's beak pointing down a little bit. There we go. If I want to add a grip, I simply have the pen tool handy and then I kind of hover over the edge of that line. Do you see how it says path in like pink or purple? If I click, it will just add a grip right there. So maybe now I can give my deer a little bit better of a, a head. There we go. And now I can kind of bring this down. Then I can bring this down. Give him some better antlers. There we go. Well, he's still pretty pathetic looking, but we're just going to go with it. So that's how you can create a very highly customized shape, but you'll notice he's very angular. Maybe what we need to do is create some curves. I'm going to actually erase Mr. Deer. Sorry, Mr. Deer, but you are going bye-bye. And I usually do that with the black arrow. Highlight the object, click delete on my keyboard. So I'm going to click the pen tool and again I'm just going to show you again I'm just drawing. This time I want this next line that I'm going to do to be a curve. So instead of just clicking and clicking and clicking I'm going to click and hold and then drag. And you can see how you can manipulate the line to be curvy. Now this behavior and I often talk about how commands and software are a lot like wild animals or really crazy children and we have to be the behavioral observance and try to figure out how to actually behave with the command instead of against the command. So as I'm kind of playing and manipulating there is a relationship between the arm and where it's pulling that shape. And it all depends on how close I am. See how the arm gets really small the closer I get to that second point and the arm gets larger as I get away and then as I'm moving things. Do you see how there's a relationship there? This takes some time to master but you can definitely master the shape. 
The other trick is that Illustrator wants to default to doing curves again, but it's really weird because it wants to do its own curve. I can't tell it what kind of curve to do. It does its own thing, silly thing. This is how you get terminators, ladies and gentlemen. This is how you get terminators, letting them think for themselves. So if I don't like the curve that it's giving me, or if I want to return to doing straight lines again, you simply click on that last grip that you made, and now it's back to line. And then again, if I want to curve, it's always the second click that allows you to manipulate the line that came beforehand. See how that works? So maybe this time I want to go this direction. And again, Terminator Illustrator is trying to tell me which curve I want. I don't want that curve, but maybe I do want a curve again. There we go. And I can kind of just keep going. And you just click on the one that you originally did and you can do curves. Look at that. Isn't that fantastic? So I've had a lot of years practice with the pen tool. You might not be feeling so graceful with your pen tool. It's okay. What the heck kind of shape am I making now? I kind of feel like this is like a sick ghost bird. Oh boy. So again, it's click and you can, you'll always default to click straight lines. As soon as you want to curve, it's always click and drag. And the line that comes before that last click that you did is the one that's going to get manipulated. Oh, looks like I'm going to make a mama bird, a baby bird. Just like that. Now I've got some overlapping happening and things like that. That's okay. If while you are drawing, you don't want to have the fill happen because it gets in your way and it does weird things and it confuses you, you can simply come over here and click no fill. And now you're just drawing with the lines. And then as soon as you want fill, you just come in here and you tell it, I want this color right here. There we go. Pen tool really is easy once you master this behavior that I just showed you. So I'm going to demonstrate a little bit further and try to help you gain a little bit more control over what's happening by tracing a picture. So I'm going to delete these shapes by ghost bird, baby ghost bird, and whatever the heck that was, square worm that I drew. And we're going to come over here and I'm going to open, actually I'm going to place a picture into this canvas. So I go to file and I go to place and then I locate the picture that I want to trace. So we're going to do these leaves right here that I took a few years ago of this photograph. I'm going to place it. Do I wish to continue? Yes, of course I do. What the heck do you think I want to do? And then I'm going to place it. Now, nine times out of 10, your pictures are going to come in super huge compared to your canvas and that's okay. So what we're going to do is control minus to zoom out so that I can actually see the entire picture. And then with the black arrow selected, I'm going to click and I'm going to drag this. So again, be careful of the proportion of your picture, hold shift to keep it in the correct proportion. Otherwise you're going to get really long, skinny, weird looking leaves. Um, and I'm just going to put it right here and then I'm going to zoom in on it. Now over in the layers panel, you'll notice that it says um, we have a linked file right here of leaves and my goal is not to move whatever it is that I'm tracing. So I'm simply going to place a lock on that layer and now I can't accidentally move. Oops, I got the pen tool. If I had the black arrow. I can't accidentally move that picture now. As soon as I unlock it, then I can move the picture. So I'm going to again place a lock on the picture and we're going to trace one of these leaves. Oh gosh, could I have picked a harder picture to trace? <sighs> of course I would do this. All right, so we're going to, um, let's do this smaller leaf right here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. It does get a little fuzzy and it's okay. We're just tracing the outline of the leaf. I'm going to grab my handy dandy pen tool and I'm going to start right here and 
I notice that this is kind of a curve right here, and my goal is to try and get not like a hundred little curves, but one nice big flowing curve. And so you kind of have to analyze it a little bit. Where's a good place to stop? But I kind of feel like right here, there's a nice curve right here. So I'm actually gonna end it right here. And then I'm gonna click and drag so that I can actually figure out a way to find that happening. So right now I've got a green and purple and that's not working with me. So I'm gonna do a no. And then on here, I'm gonna turn it to black by doing an RGB of zero, zero. And I'm also, it's pretty thick, but I can't really manipulate the size of that right now while I'm drawing. So I'm just gonna leave it for now. And then I'm gonna keep drawing. So right now you can see that Illustrator's trying to be a Terminator and decide for itself what kind of curve come next. And I don't want it to decide, I want to decide myself. I'm in charge, Illustrator. So I'm gonna click on that grip that I just did. And it's kind of hard to see, but it actually might be a little bit more of an angle right here. So I'm just gonna do a straight line. And then if I wanna curve, kind of like this, and another curve, and it's, you know, you don't have to get like picture perfect with it. Now what happened here is I thought I clicked on that previous grip and I didn't. So I'm gonna control Z and you have to be careful of what you click on. So make sure that you're clicking on the right thing. Oh, gosh darn it. There we go. So when I do shapes like this, I pretty much always click on the grip that I just started so that I can kind of start fresh and clean and I can decide if I want a straight arrow, straight line, or if I want to do a little curve to it. So again, I've been working with this tool for a really long time. I'm probably making it a lot easier looking than what you're experiencing and that's okay. I can't tell you how frustrated I was with the pen tool when I first started learning it, but with the practice and understanding how it behaves, you can actually master it pretty quickly. Practice time and just having the passion to, to get it traced. So I'm gonna go super fast and I'm not gonna like fully trace every single line. You can decide if you want to trace every single curve or if you just kinda wanna do a general idea. I like the general idea kind of thing. Don't have to be perfect at least not in this example. Curve here, oop, there's a little curve kind of happening here. And there I have my leaf traced. Pause the video if you need to finish tracing, but I'm gonna go ahead and move on with the rest of this. So I can actually now take the black arrow and highlight it. And I can now give it a fill. So again, the stupid brushes are missing. So I'm gonna come over here and choose the green that I want for the fill. Nope, it's doing the border. So I just double click to get it to, or actually you can um, click default too and it'll bring it back to like white and black. And then you can come over here and choose that you want a green leaf and maybe I don't want that thick of a border. So I'm gonna do 0.25 to kind of thin it up a little bit. And there we have a little leaf graphic. So we are good to go. I'm going to control minus out and then I'm gonna kind of move it out so that you can see what it's doing. Maybe make it a little bigger. And maybe this is the start of a logo that I wanna work on. You just never know what you're going to do with shapes that you can trace or come up with on your own. So again, practice, practice, practice is going to make you a master at the pen tool. It is not something that comes natural when you first start working with it. It's a kind of a strange feeling, but eventually that strange feeling becomes natural. So don't beat yourself up if you're not getting it right away. Practice, 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 and you'll see that you're starting to become an expert in no time. Before I go, I do want to just show you real briefly what those other things of the pen tool were. So like if you wanted to add an anchor point, you can click on that and add an anchor point instead of just the pen tool. And of course, if you want to delete an anchor point, you can choose that option. 
and you can delete any of these that you wish. So maybe um, I don't want that one there. Maybe I don't want that one. Well, that makes the leaf look kind of ugly. I'm going to control Z. But that just gives you a basic understanding of how to manipulate the shapes and how to do with it what you want. So that's the pen tool in a nutshell. It's very natural to feel like it's frustrating or it's um, weird to work with, but if you practice, 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 you're going to be an expert at it at no time. <laughs>
Hello and welcome to the introduction video to Adobe Illustrator for interior designers. My name is JR. I'm going to be your guide through this amazing world that is Adobe Illustrator. Out of all the Adobe products, Illustrator is definitely my favorite and I hope to show you some tricks that will make it your favorite too. I also want to remind the viewing audience that this series teaches Illustrator in ways that interior design students may find handy. Uh, there are a lot of ways to go about using Illustrator. My methodology is what I'm going to be showing you in this series, so it may or may not be the best methodology for you. I'm a big promoter of finding what works best for you, so if mine doesn't work, there are, I'm sure, a lot of series out there that might work better for you. But I do try to break down Illustrator into easy to follow steps, so even if you're not an interior design student, you should still be able to follow along with ease and grace. Just remember, design software is not always the easiest to learn, so be kind to yourself through the learning process, and know that if you do feel frustrated at any point, then you are human. And everyone who has ever done anything great with design software has felt frustrated at some point, so you're really in good hands if you do. Well, let's get started, shall we? In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the interface of Illustrator, where to find things, how to kind of work your way through all the different areas on the screen. Uh, so the first thing that happens is you open Illustrator, and this is probably something that you see on your screen as well. Your first goal is to either create a new project or open a previous project. So over here on the left hand side you see two buttons, create new or open. You can also find this up in the main menu bar which is what this is at the very top. Under file you should see that there's new and open as well. I'm just going to go ahead and click on the create new button since we haven't really opened or done anything previously in Illustrator. And what happens is this little window pops up. So this is kind of setting up what kind of document that you're going to be working on. So the first thing you want to do is check up at the very top. Are you working on a project for a mobile device? Is it for a website? Are you going to print it? Are you working film or video? Or are you doing art and illustration? Personally, I always choose print. Even if it's for any of the other things, uh, it's just uh, a real basic, easy thing to work with. So the first thing you're going to notice is that it says letter. So these are all the different types of documents that you can work with. It says letter and it's in a, a measuring unit called points. Now I'm an interior designer. I don't understand points. Graphic designers and people who illustrate all the time, they definitely understand that method of measurement. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to the right side and I'm going to choose inches instead of points. Oh, that's so much better because now it's reading eight and a half by 11. Yes, it still reads points over here, but at least I can control like what kind of document that I'm working on. So eight and a half by 11 is a standard American size piece of paper that we work with. So I'm going to keep that. The next thing that you need to look at is am I working in portrait or landscape? So you can decide which one that you want to work with. Artboards. So you're going to see when we open this document that there's going to be um, a background and then a white kind of canvas like area that's where you're going to actually put the things that you create onto and that's called an artboard. So for right now I'm just going to do one, but there might come a time when you're doing a booklet or a pamphlet or you're trying to create um, multiple sheets within the document, that is when you would use more than one artboard. Bleed has to do with the printing boundaries. I almost always leave it in zeros. And I think that's pretty much all we need to worry about. Um, if we go to more settings, um, there is this thing called color mode and it's where you can choose whether your document is CMYK or RGB. CMYK is cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Those are the printing colors that like your inkjet or laser jet printers work with. Uh, so it's really great if you know that you're going to physically print a document, I would stick with CMYK. 
if you know that this is going to be a digital presentation project, it's going to be on a website or PowerPoint or something that's um, actually viewed on screens, then I would choose the RGB color mode. RGB stands for red, green, blue, which are the colors of light that make up your screen. So there's a little bit of trivia for you. I'm going to keep it at CMYK. Um, raster effects, so this is 300 um, PPI. I just usually keep it there. Um, it means pixels per inch, and the more you have, the better quality your photos. So 300 is a really great mode. And then preview mold, we can decide if um, we want, I honestly don't even know what those are. So I always keep it on default. And I'm going to go ahead and click create document. And it takes a second. And here it is. So like I said, uh, what happens is you get this gray background and then it's like a white piece of paper sitting on top of that gray background. So all the dimensions of the paper that we did in that little create new document window box is set up and we now have an eight and a half by 11 size piece of paper. Any kind of art that you do in Illustrator is going to be done on the white paper at least if you want it printed. Now you can, of course, always work in the gray area, but if you leave anything in the gray area, it will not print on the document. So that kind of helps you understand. Um, I oftentimes work in the gray and then move it over to the white. Uh, it's totally up to you how you want to work it. So I already mentioned the menu bar up above, and this is where you go to save documents up in the file um, portion of the menu bar. You can print documents from here. In Illustrator, if you want to make a JPEG, a ping, or a TIFF, you actually have to export it out of Illustrator. In Photoshop, you actually save as, and you can turn it into a JPEG that way. So there's a little bit of a difference between Illustrator and Photoshop in that sense. So just remember, if you want to create a picture file, you always export it, and you always export as. Um, edit is where you go to copy and paste. You can kind of work with a few different things in edit. Object is where you can decide um, like how to transform it, if you need to scale it, rotate it, all that kind of stuff. Um, there's a lot of different uh, commands throughout this whole uh, menu bar. I'm not going to go through all of them. Effect is really fun because you can um, work with um, uh, Photoshop effects, you can also stylize, rasterize, oh my gosh, this is so much terminology that you don't know yet. It's okay, we're going to get you through it. Uh, and then of course, window. So this is a really great thing to show you if you need to turn on an extra panel uh, that hosts a whole lot of tools, um, different types of tools that you want to work with. Um, this is what you do. So for instance, if I wanted to open the brush panel, you can see that it opened up um, a little window essentially is what a panel is, but it hosts a whole lot of different tools that you can use to create the lines and shapes that you want to create. I'm just going to simply click close just to close that panel and I can always reopen it by going back to the window. Right underneath the main menu bar is the what I call the options bar. So anytime that you're working with a command, this option bar can change to give you different parameters that you can work with. So for instance, if I were going to choose type tool over here, you'll see that this kind of updates with all the different things that I can do when I go to add text to a document. So font and is it going to be bold or regular? Is it going to be 12 point in size? Is it going to be 52 points in size? Is it left justified, center justified? Um, all that kind of thing. And then if I choose a shape, you'll see how that also changes. So the options bar usually changes only when you have a command active or a tool active um, that allows you to change parameters of what's happening. So I already kind of pointed this out. This is your main toolbar, and this is where you're going to go to do most of your work in Illustrator. So things like clicking on objects, selecting objects, um, the type tool, the shape tool, um, all of these things, how to change the color and the border color um, are really great. Uh, 
These are really important tools for you to know and it's always good to have this toolbar out and in the open. I always keep it right where Illustrator defaults it to and that is your main toolbar. Over on the right hand side you're going to see that there are already some pre-chosen panels for you. Um, the one I want to pay most attention to is the layers panel. Layers is a whole other video. <laughs> it's a very um, dynamic way of organizing your drawings. Um, it's a little different than anything that you've ever seen before, but once you understand it, it makes a lot of sense and it makes working with Illustrator a lot easier. So in a nutshell, this is Adobe Illustrator. The interface, I kind of showed you where to find a few things. <coughs> in the next video series, I am going to show you how to work with some of the tools that you saw on the left hand side of your screen.